Well, welcome back to the another exciting discussion as we discover the world of Piaget. And in this uh, discussion, what we're going to do is we're going to examine terms that Piaget used. Some, of course, are my terms, but I think you'll enjoy this. Let's go back to the story of Little Rusty just a minute and see if we can understand some new terms. Little Rusty is in a state of disequilibrium. What is wrong with little Rusty is that he sees an animal and he doesn't know what it is, doesn't know it's an animal, he's an infant, he's trying to interact with his environment, and he's just totally blown out of the water. And Mama says to him that, Pumpkin, that's a dog. And so what he does is he builds a dog schema. He goes through a thing of accommodation in order to interact with his environment, he has to make a new schema, and he makes a dog schema, and now he can deeply file his little dog into the dog schema, and he is in marvelous equilibrium. Well, little Rusty sees another dog, and since he already has a dog schema, there's no need for him to have to do an accommodation and build a new folder. He is able simply to practice assimilation. The new dog that he sees neatly fits into his dog schema folder, so he's a easily able to assimilate that uh, experience with his society. He meets another dog, and he no longer does he need to build a new dog schema. He already has one. He can assimilate this information and just fold it neatly into the folder. And with all three dogs, he now has equilibrium. When he sees those dogs, he knows what they are. They have a dog schema. That's where they belong. Now, remember little Rusty suddenly sees a cow, and he doesn't know what in the world to do with it. He's, he's at loss, and he's got to figure out, is it a dog? And he says dog, and Mama says no pumpkin. That most certainly is not a dog. That's a cow. Well, at this point, little Rusty's brain hurts, but he decides that he might better accommodate this new experience by building a new schema. So he goes through accommodation, and he now signs the cow into that schema, and he has equilibrium again. Now, let's think about what might happen next. Little Rusty has a dog schema and a cow schema. If he sees a dog, he can assimilate it. If he sees a cow, he can assimilate it. Assimilation means that he, they fold neatly into existing folders. But now he sees something here, and he's going to say dog, and Mama's going to say, no, it's not a dog pumpkin. And he's going to say cow, and Mama's going to say, no, it's not a cow. Well, little Rusty's head hurts at this time, and he looks at the animal, and the mother says, that is an elephant. So he's in disequilibrium. What's he going to have to do? Is he going to assimilate, or is he going to accommodate? Well, if he assimilated, that means that this creature would fit neatly into one of his existing schema. And he doesn't have an elephant schema, so he cannot assimilate. He must go through accommodation. And he must take this new experience, build a new schema, so he adds an elephant schema to his classifications of schemata. He can now, if he sees another elephant, he can neatly assimilate it into the new schema. But remember, in this case, it was his first elephant, so he had to go through accommodation, build a new schema, and then he put that elephant neatly filed away in order to be back in equilibrium. Now, the purpose of all of these little pictures and things was really to help you understand the difference between assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation neatly fits it into an existing schema. Accommodation requires the creation of a new schema in order to make the information fit into his brain and his experiences. And I hope you got a little bit out of this. Watch out for elephants, dogs, and cows. <laughs>